nothing is gonna save your painting if your drawing is not right. And that's what we are gonna fix on our new video lesson on our YouTube channel of Artifacto School. Hi, my name is Miroslava and I'm happy to see you all here today, uh, full of motivation to make your painting skill, your drawing skill to the new level and um, to boost your energy and forget about the problem in the world because painting is a really amazing way to achieve this. So today's video lesson is going to be um, done by Lyubov Titova, a new instructor at our school. She's a practicing architect and she's going to talk today about drawing because she does it in such detailed way and she will show you and share with you her secrets on how to achieve the right proportions in your drawing. I think that many of you know that that's absolutely correct uh, and the number one mistake in so to say in a wrong drawing part is the wrong proportions and that's what we're going to talk today today we're going to be uh painting an amazingly beautiful jar of tulips and we split this drawing uh lesson into two parts so today in this youtube video lesson we're going to be drawing the jar itself and we also invite you to watch the second part of this video via active link uh, in the right upper corner. So just click on that link and get regist registered and see how to uh, draw the tulips actually, how to make the proportions of tulips right, how to uh, place them so that they make up a good composition. So now we are going to be drawing a jar and registering by actively here in the right upper corner or in the active link in the description to this video you're going to be able to watch the second part of this lesson so take your chance uh, put the video on pause and get registered right now because this is a limited time offer and if you are ready then let's watch the first part Let's start with a pencil sketch and try not to just copy our reference photo. Let's figure out how the objects are arranged. It's better if you sketch along with me on regular plain drawing paper in order to get a feel of the shape of the still life and arrange it correctly on the paper. Then you can draw it on your nice watercolor paper. This way there will be less mistakes and less work with an eraser on the final drawing. In our lessons, we will go from the simple to the complex. So the subject matter was chosen with fairly simple shapes, a jar of flowers. We will first need to draw the big shapes and try to keep the proportions accurate. We will start with a small sketch in the upper left corner of the paper. Making a light sketch of the still life while keeping the proportions in mind. This kind of sketch is especially useful when drawing from nature as it immediately shows us the design and composition. We divide the sheet in half vertically and horizontally. These grid lines will help us to transfer the picture from the reference photo to our paper more accurately. Let's also study our reference. We will visually divide it vertically and horizontally. And then we can see what falls within those four squares. When we divide it horizontally, we see that the jar occupies the entire lower part of the paper. It does not go, for example, here in the upper part. It is located completely in the lower part from the center of the paper. And now, looking at the vertical line, the grid line is also the central axis of the jar, meaning the jar is split in half equally on the left side of the axis 
it is as it is on the right. Based on our observations and what we have estimated, we can now outline the dimensions of the jar onto our paper. As we have already learned, the top of the jar is in the middle of the paper horizontally, and the bottom is somewhere like that. In general, with just a few simple lines, not delving into any details, we just show our still life with marks. Next, we will draw the tulips with simple circles. Here we have outlined the still life. The sketch of our still life, a jar of tulips, should be in proportion with the size of the selected paper and format. If the jar is too small, then it will be lost on a large sheet of paper. If it is too large, it will rest at the edge of the paper and will give the impression that it is a very tight squeeze into that space. So we need to be immediately aware of this and be mindful of the negative space around the object. Here, in our sketch, we have figured it all out so we can easily transfer it onto the paper where we will also divide the paper in half vertically and horizontally. Now we already have the edges of the still life on the reference photo, and here we already have them arranged on the paper. If we paint from nature, then this kind of sketch helps a lot in the layout. If we accidentally draw something too large or too small, we can easily adjust something if it has gone beyond the borders or looks much too small for the space. This is why small sketches are so important. Then we can move on to the bigger sheet of paper and continue to break down the different parts of the still life. We start with the general proportions of the object. Let's see how many times the width of the jar fits into the height of the jar. We can see that that's the top of the jar, and that's the bottom of it. If we measure the width and compare it to the height, we can see that the height is about one and three quarters of the width. Using the overall dimensions, we are simply making marks up and down the paper and not drawing anything specific yet. We are trying to get the important measurements down on our drawing. We also have the tulips to think about, but for now, we just have to outline the top and bottom of the jar and the sides. Next, we will draw ellipses. If the view from above is looked at, the jar has a round shape, but if it is slightly in perspective, then the circle becomes an ellipse. The ellipses will help us to finish the shape of the jar.
the neck is slightly narrower, narrower than the width. So if the width of the jar is like this, the distance from the axis are equal. We draw grid lines by lightly pressing the pencil. They will be erased later. We need to have a clear understanding of the opening of the jar so that we don't get anything wrong. Be sure to draw the horizontal and vertical grid lines. There is a smaller diameter and a larger diameter. Smoothly connect these two diameters. Next is the bottom of the jar. The ellipse is slightly opened more than the top one. First we plan a smaller diameter and then a larger one. If you look at the jar more closely, it has slightly beveled edges, so the ellipse is a little smaller. Here you need to show the transition from the neck to the main part of the jar and smoothly connect the transitions. The jar is threaded for screwing on a lid. It can be depicted here and we can also show the water level. Draw a horizontal line for the water level. The opening of the ellipse will be slightly wider than the neck. So we are planning a larger diameter. And then sm smoothly connect it with the smaller ones. The thickness of the glass can be shown. We can show a little bit more of the water level here. And then we can go a little lower and we will make all of these distances with the same types of lines. So 
smoothly connect with the bottom. The bottom part has some thicker glass and another ellipse will appear there. I hope you like this video and if this is so do not forget to like this video to subscribe to our youtube channel and to turn on the notifications that really helps us a lot and motivates us to create new video lessons for you now try to draw something on your own just make up a composition yeah or a still life and try to draw applying the principles and techniques which Lubov uh, shared with you in this video lesson and please do not forget that you have an amazing opportunity. This is a limited time offer to watch the second part of this uh, lesson and learn how to draw tulips. And I hope you will like it and improve your drawing skills. And see you next time. Bye bye.